European Industrial Revo Revolution from 1760 to 1850, and it began in Great Britain. Now, this was a time period of transitioning from manufacturing or from cottage industries to manufacturing machines or working out some, from the home and creating things by hand to actually having mass productions in a factory system. Cause and effect for, for the Industrial Revolution? Well, first off, scientific revolution. The scientific revolution, as we've discussed in class before, led to a great many of things, not just medicines, but also machinery. With this, with the science re scientific revolution, the industrial revolution came about. With the industrial re revolution, inventions of steam to power machines to do the work of hand tools and in the place of humans, meaning these machines could do more, produce more, than humans could do by hand. Whereas a human could create or weave cloth in, or 10 pieces of cloth in a day, a machine may be able to do 100 pieces to 200 pieces of cloth per day. That mass production increases a lot. <clears throat> which allows, us, allows for a mass increase of production of goods and invention of transportation to increase the trade. Not only was it just machines for industry making such as cloth and other goods, but also steam powered engines. Transportation to increase trade and machines to increase good production led to expansion of small villages into large cities, expansion of countries to become more advanced and powerful and then it also opened up even more global trading for us. Now, the advantages and disadvantages of the European Industrial Revolution. For the advantages, you had economic shift from villages to cities and towns, meaning where people were living in rural areas and living in villages, small villages, they now were moving into the cities and getting jobs with, with the factory systems. This was leading to more city growth. The middle class was created in the social structure. Before that, we've talked about the feudal system, we've talked about other social classes where the middle class was not included. When the Industrial Revolution came about, the middle class really did start before, to come about because it was the working class and now that you have more of a working class other than farming your middle class can come about. Life was made more comfortable due to transportation and communication and manufacturing. Well when we look at life today how comfortable are our lives because of all of the, the transportation and communication that we have. Back then although it wasn't much and we don't look at it as much it was a lot. They could do less, they had more time for more leisurely things <clears throat> such as sports and going out. Global, global trading expanded again the, the expansion of global trading through steamboats and steam trains or steam engines excuse me which which would lead to trains you had more global trading happening so we could actually trade from country to country at this point in time. Disadvantages. The disadvantages, cities were crowded because everybody was moving into the cities and so they were beginning to get overpopulated. Spread of disease. Our sanitary systems that we have today were non-existent then. So we really didn't have a whole lot of understanding of how diseases spread. With the un, with the un sanitary conditions, disease spreads in that manner. So we did have a large spread of disease. Pollution, the factory systems that we've talked about before create pollution from the coal and the dust that they exhume, exhume into the air. Pollution and, and the, the waste that they put into water as well. This, this was the start of where pollution was coming from. Factory workers had long hours, long, low wages, Poor working conditions, and when we say poor working conditions, remember when we talked about the Victorian era, 
and I talked to you about the factories and told you that the windows would be closed and there was dust and it was hot. There wasn't any air conditioning. And, you know, you worked from sun up to sundown. You did not get to see the daylight very often. And what you had to do is work the dirty, dingy, hot, sweaty jobs. They also had no job security. With that, what I mean is today, you can have sick days, you can have sick leave. Then, they didn't have that. If you took a day off, chances are you were not going to have a job the next day because they couldn't afford to hold your job for you and you couldn't afford to lose your job. So you were working whether you were sick, whether you were dying, or whether, you know, if your family was in need, it didn't matter. You had to work in order to ensure that your position was still good. Also, women and children labor. We've talked about women and child labor before and how they were also placed in the work in the work industry or in the factory industries. And they were given the dirtier jobs, the children, especially with their small hands and the loss of children, child life because they were being maimed or killed doing the harder jobs that men could not necessarily do in the factory systems. And of course, the last one for the disadvantage is you did have a loss of the village community because everybody was moving into the cities and the, in the towns and it became more of a, a urban society. The rural society or the village society was lost. That'll be fine. <laughs> Some inventions from the Industrial Revolution. You had the steam engine, the spinning jenny, the cotton gin, the steamboat, and the steam-powered train. Now, all of these we don't necessarily use today, but we see the effects of them today. We have um, mass production of clothing being made. We have cotton being spun, that was what the spinning jenny did. The cotton gin actually took the seeds out of the cotton for us. And all of this has, has revamped in today's society for our trains, our planes, and our automobiles. There actually was a second industrial revolution that we will talk about soon that really affected everything after World War One.